good morning to most of you and this is afternoon in china thank you mobidic team for like inviting me here to this great event to have the speech about you know china market hyper casual games and more than like it's my great pleasure so before i, I believe you have like participated in many speech about china market and you understand probably how big it is how important it is and before every speech, you're going to see a slide talking about the figures, the numbers, right? How big it is. I don't want to enter to the figure part this, uh, today. You have plenty of them in Google. You can find them. So let's just see how China looks like. You can see the pictures now. So this is the picture uh, I shoot a few days ago in the subway. I, I love subway, not because like I, I like the, the transportation, because I like to see people when they really interact with their mobile phone when they really play the the games because usually you know like we produce hyper casual games we are we're the producer but we are not necessarily like most of us we don't play it every day right so it's just fascinating to see people they're really playing like they're there they're so hooked and if you take a look of the picture if you zoom in you will lose count like how many mobile devices are there so I'm not going to touch the figures, but just one figure. So in China, actually, there is 1 billion people with access to the mobile phones. So yeah, China market is enormous, it's huge. Maybe it's far away, but it's definitely a market you should think of when you start to produce your game. Before the, the like in the end of the presentation, I'm going to show you a success case about the user acquisition, about Android publishing. Uh, real case. So don't don't leave. Wait until the end of the presentation. And okay, confirm. Okay, you can hear me. Yeah, I'm <laughs> great relief. So uh, before the content, let's start from a small quiz. You know, to to warm up. The first question is the most commonly asked every single time before a studio or developers they launch their game into China. So. Which language do we use in mainland China? Simplified or tradition? If you know the answer, if you're sure, feel free to type in the bar there, like if you know the answers. I'm not going to share here. I will share all of them, like three small quiz. I'm going to share in one shot. All right, remember this question. So which language do we use in mainland China? Second, this is the problematic one. And this is one of the many reasons why many developers, they don't want to handle China. Can your game contain a purchase in China? Yes, no, yes, no. All right, okay. The third question. And it's it's a funny one also that I, okay, I, I, I'm not gonna share now. So what's the difference between TikTok and Douyin? You know the answer? All right, let's go back to the first one. So in mainland China, mainland meaning exclude Hong Kong, Taiwan, these parts, we use simplified Chinese. All right. Second one. Can your game contain your purchase in China? Yes, you can, but you need ISBN. It's a document that is almost impossible for hyper-casual games. So we're not going to touch there. So in conclusion, if you want to launch your game into China and if your worldwide version contains in your purchase, meaning you need to have a separate bundle with, with in-app purchase excluded, meaning that you need to, for the same game, you need to manage two different bundles. So this is a little bit problematic, and that's one of the many reasons why China market is, let's say, a headache for some of you, all right? So the second question is, yes, you can, but it needs some document. For hyper casual, it's basically a no. The third question, what's the difference between TikTok and Douyin? So actually, we are using a different TikTok. So our TikTok, we call it Douyin. It's like, it's a different content. It's a different platform. So you cannot really see what we post in our Douyin. And we don't see what you post there. So it's actually two different apps. So if you know the answer of all these three questions, congrats. Like, you're almost ready for the China market. If no, don't worry. Let's continue. So a few words about us. Uh, I'm Hannah from Funloop. I'm the partnership director uh, of the Funloop. We established the company in 2018 after we feel, you know, the gap when the foreign advertisers, when they want to enter China market, the language, the paperwork. So we are from like the founders from Apple Loving, I was from Iron Source. So we really like, we understand the strong desire, the strong needs. That's why we initiated this company. 
So our vision is that we want to provide the best one-step consulting service to grow your titles in China. So actually, we were one of the first to bring good hyper casual games into China market. And nowadays, it's not, it's, it's not just hyper casual, have casual games, have utility, but hyper casual is one of our strongest points. Uh, I know probably there are more like pain points, but here is like what I want to summary here is the most commonly uh, I segmented into three parts. So the biggest, biggest problem when you want to launch your game in China, I think is the user acquisition part because the creatives that we use in China is not the same like when you use worldwide. For example, you probably can use English creatives when you launch Europe, right? It probably can work, but in China it's definitely a no. The most, the majority of the users who play your game doesn't speak English, let's say at all. So the user acquisition part, the creative, and also the operation. So most of the Chinese local uh, ad networks, let's say Binance, Kuaishou, Tencent, uh, most of them, their dashboard is still in Chinese. So it's impossible for you to manage it well and the localization of the game itself and the branding, the KOL, da, da, da. So this is the, I think it's most major part when you want to enter China market, this is the biggest problem. And second is the policy. So in China, for example, the game cannot contain violence, meaning you cannot have blood, you cannot have like two, like the weapons, uh, certain, certain type of weapons you cannot contain in the game. So this is some of the game you cannot even launch your game in China if you don't change your content a little bit and the regulations. So if you want to do user acquisition in China, you need a document called copyright. So the paperwork is also a, a, a barrier for the developers. And the third part, and I think is also the mission impossible part is Android side. So technical integration, you cannot have Oppo SDK when you're launching Xiaomi, da, da, da. So there are many like different rules and it's hard for foreign uh, publisher studios to understand like every part. So what's our service? What fun loop can help you to launch in China successfully? I'm going to segment it into two parts. So, okay, cool. So first is of course the user acquisition here. I write iOS and Android, but mostly it's just iOS. I'm going to touch Android later. So first of all is of course creatives. We're going to produce you the creatives that you use in China market with the voiceovers, with the real actors. And the good thing is that we will share back the creatives that we uh, produce. So we can use in other video networks, Unity, Aerosource, Apple Wing, we don't care. So in, in this kind of cooperation, you reduce your like effort in producing China. Like you, you don't need to put any much effort in China market. You can just use our productions to the other video networks. And we're gonna use the combined trend if any points. We, we call it in Chinese, haha points, the points that make you laugh. So hyper casual games, uh, the creative is, uh, so we're gonna combine with the social activities, the social trends to make sure that your creatives gonna win in TikTok with the lowest CPI possible. So this is the creative service we provide you. And second, is also important is the optimization service. So we actually, we fully manage your advertising account, meaning that we create, create campaigns, we optimize it, we change the bid, we upload creatives, we do everything and you have the login. You have 100% transparency and you can touch if you want, but it's good enough that you just have the login and monitor it. We do everything for you. So this is the optimization part and the daily communication would be that, hey, Funloop, listen, I want to reach uh, CPL 0.4, uh, 40 cents in China, please reach it, something like this. So this is our job to reach the target and to make sure that you are ROI positive and the daily communication uh, will be how we reached and the, can you give us more budget? Like we are your outsource uh, team dedicated to work for you. So this is the optimization part the service we're going to provide you. And the third, uh, many people neglect it, but I think is really, really important is the localization. I mean, uh, your team, your, your developers, you put a lot of effort in making the game perfect, all the mechanic, all the meta features, right? But a small f uh, fix in the localization can make it perfect. 
one example that I always use, and many of you have mistake. For example, in the re uh, rewarded video ad units, usually it's writes free, right? But if you use Google translation, free translates into freedom. But if you put freedom there in Chinese, uh, people with no experience in the game would never click it, right? And this mistake I see more than 10 times already in each of you's game. So uh, we provide you the localization support to make sure that your game is with the most native language possible to make sure that the users can be the most engaged. And also the naming, the, uh, the store screenshots, also the updates notes, some of you also like don't pay attention to this. But if imagine if you are a Chinese user who don't speak any English, who go to the store page and see the updates notes in English, what you will do, right? So these small things, we are your yard to make sure that everything is perfect here. The content, the in-game, the notification, all right? So this is about the user acquisition part. And here is based on service fee. So on top of our spending, we're gonna charge you an extra service fee, but everything is under the consideration that we reach your ROS target. So you don't need to worry about your profit, ROS. We kind of like earn the service fee by our service. All right, cool. And the second part of our service is of course, uh, Android publishing. So maybe now if you have thought about this like part before, ah, just if some of you don't know yet, we don't have Google Play in China, obviously, <laughs> all right? So for Android publishing, these are the three main parts we're gonna help you. So first, the most important, uh, the important part is of course the technical support. So we in charge of everything, monetization, tracking, but meaning that you need to give us our source code, right? Like after you provide the source code, we're gonna do everything for you. You don't need to put any effort in it. And what's more is, for example, Android publishing in China is not just about integrate some monetization SDK because like Unity, Apple, they are not working in China Android, right? It's more about the game content localization. For example, if you have violence in the game, we are gonna remove for you. If you have some content that is doesn't meet our, let's say, value uh, and the Chinese audience doesn't understand, we are gonna adjust it or remove it for you. And the third point is, for example, all the low-end Android device. In China, most of the Android device, they are the cheap, like the, the, the low-end. And maybe your game didn't consider this part of the users, but that are the major parts in China. So we're gonna optimize your game. We're gonna optimize your code to make sure that the game works well in the lower end Android device. So this is the technical part that we are gonna help you when we launch your game in China Android. And the second part is the same, like the user acquisition. We do everything user acquisition, creative, launching all the channels. So the channel, including the user acquisition channels, which you are familiar with, Binance, uh, Eric, Kuaisho, IGE, Tencent, and also have the store, for example, Oppo, Vivo, these stores. So we're gonna cover all the channels for you. We take care of the growth for you in general in China Android. And the third part is of course the optimization. So it's not like one shot business. So, okay, here, take the source code, launch it and bye-bye. No, we're gonna provide you ongoing support in the optimization. For example, there are some meta feature that's working well in other game. We are gonna help you to add in your game. We're gonna make sure that to a IP test, to make sure this feature working good. And if you like our feature, we can also maybe share back the source code to benefit your worldwide version, which we did before with other partners and they love it. And yeah, to optimize, it, uh, to optimize the game. For example, in China, we hate interstitial. We, we, know, we don't love reward video, but we really hate interstitial. So for example, if some hyper casual game that is heavily depend on interstitial, we're gonna think of a way to like to shift the, uh, the proportion. So for Android publishing, these are the things that we're gonna help you. We can help you to publish in iOS as well, but this part, like most of you can handle by yourself. So mostly we focus on Android, but if you don't have, a, if you're a small studio, you don't have power to touch China at all. So we would love to take iOS as well, which we did before, right? Okay, so these are the two major uh, things we do. And now I'm gonna dive to the success case. First one. So the first one is about user acquisition. It's a public case shared with shared by uh, presented by Biden as well before with Tech Nation. 
So this is a relatively new game by the icon I, I wrote there. It's Giant Rush. So we help them to remain in top 10 gaming for 18 days. Maybe you feel, but uh, maybe you feel 18 days is okay, but you need to understand that this time is the most golden time. It was Chinese Spring Festival. Is the once a year that Chinese don't need to work and they relax with their mobile phone with their family. So it's super impressive that during the entire Spring Festival, we managed to, to remain in the top 10. So it brought them a lot of organics. So uh, the main source here is Biden's for sure. And the key points of the success is the seamless agency partnership and the creative production. So actually, in the real case, we, uh, Biden and Technician, we are kind of a, a, a team that we're in the, in the same group. We talk every day. We share the best practice. Uh, Biden as as the media partner, like they can see the the, the situation as 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 all right. They will give us advice, and we as a service provider, we do the uh, creatives, we make the campaign management, we make sure that they reach their uh, RI target. So in this case, we produce more than five creative assets every week. Like in the peak time, is more than five. Five is just average. And during the, the entire like uh, entire uh, history, we created more than 100 ad groups. So this is one of the problems that uh, why many of you feel is very problematic in China. So the ad platform, the algorithm is very much different from what you are familiar with. So on Binance, you need to create manually a lot of, a lot of ad groups to make sure your campaign stand out. So this is the job that we will do for you. You don't need to worry at all. All right. So this is the success case with the uh, giant rush. And of course, they are using other video networks. But again, for example, the creatives we produced, we share back with you. So you can launch. You don't need to worry about creative at all if you work with us and you just launch them directly in the Unity, in the Apple thing. Right. OK. So this is about user acquisition part. And I'm going to share a case about Android publishing. All right. This is not actually, it's, it's not a hyper casual game. It's casual ish, but it, the concept is the same. It's, it's the same concept. So it's a parkour race from Madbox. And we worked with them almost a year, like since the beginning of their launching, like since the beginning of their worldwide launching, we managed to like publish it into China Android market. And it's a great success. Uh, in the peak time, it has 700,000 DAO in the Android market. Um, as you can see, take a look of the screenshot. So again, for Android publishing is not simply just SDK integration. We also help you to like change the content. For example, in China, like we accept more than we wrote the video. So we try everything we can do to put more features to, to, to engage the users. So this is the feature that we develop for them. Before each of, uh, before each of the racing, before each of the, the parkour racing, you have an option that if you watch and reward the video, you can enlarge your, your character. The character will look bigger than the, than the other competitors. So this feature we uh, developed, we A-B tested, and was success. Like it successfully improved the impression per DAO. So we use this in, in our Android version, right? OK. And secondly, we develop the skin for them. Take a look on the right downstairs corner. I think it's <laughs> it's a, it's a TikTokish TikTok style skin, and we use this to promote in KOL events. So how it works in China? It's a, a common trick in China Android, not necessarily in iOS, but it's it's a common trick in Android market. So for example, if you see a creative in TikTok, and uh, you you see a very for example this skin we're gonna present this skin the cherry is running with this TikTok skin in the creative and we're gonna tell the users that hey listen you like this skin if you download the game now directly with this link i'm gonna give you a redeem code for example 555 and after you download the game you put this code inside the game and boom you can directly get the same skin as the in the creative so this trick is commonly used in Android market. I mean, like whatever game that can fit this skin system, right? And it's working well. Like it's not just improve their monetization. It also benefits the user acquisition. I mean, with the funny creatives, like with the funny skins, it dropped the CPI cost. So this is the second we did for them. 
and have many small things. I think these two are the most major. And uh, yeah, they, the entire, I think for the past year, yeah, for the past year, we launched something around last year, April as well. Uh, we gained 20 million users together. But keep in mind that China Android user value is something like 30, 20, 30% 30 of the iOS. But 20 million users is quite impressive for such a game. Cool. All right, so this is like everything I want to share today. And uh, we have more cases. Uh, you can see our partners in our official websites. And uh, after this conference, after this speech, if you want to hear more about China, if you want to consult me, like how, if your game can work in China, if not, if it's worth publishing, if it's worth your acquisition, feel free to ping me. You can find me on Skype. You can find me on LinkedIn. All right. Cool. I think that's everything I want to share today. And thank you again. Thank you, Mabdiktim, for inviting me. And yeah, if you want to know more things about China, feel free to ping me. I'm available in LinkedIn and Skype. Thank you. Thank <music> you.